Let us talk now about timing assumptions. Remember that when we specify a service, and um, one part of the specifying of the service is the model. We talked about Fourier models of um, nodes and channels, and now we are going to talk about uh, the assumptions on timing, uh, the amount of synchrony in the system. We have discussed this issue before, but we so this will be a fast um, repetition. So, timing assumptions are assumptions that are relating to the different processing speed of nodes and the different uh, speeds of, of uh, transmission of messages hmm, in a channel. Okay. And we know from uh, the first lecture that we have uh, three basic type of systems, synchronous systems, asynchronous systems, and partially synchronous systems. Okay. These are the three things that we types of system that we have. Asynchronous systems. In asynchronous systems, the processing time of every node varies arbitrarily because the node could be overloaded, for example, and there is no bound on transmission time. We have handled this in our uh, former model and the way to handle this type of system is try to use another notion of logical time. We built one based on causality. And also we know um, that total order is not observable if you there is no access to a global clock. And this is we use the competition theorem to show that total order events are not observable. In uh, synchronous systems, the model assumes synchronous computation. And by synchronous computation, there is an upper bound on node processing delays. For a node to perform a computation step, there is always an upper bound on that. And also, the communication is synchronous in the sense that there is an upper bound on message transmission delay, the time it takes for a message from the sender to the receiver. And also, there is synchronous physical clocks, which means that nodes have physical clocks. And there is an upper known bound on the clock drift over time and the clock skew between the different clocks on different nodes. Well, one thing you might want to study and answer is why do we um, study synchronous systems? I leave this question open for you. Then we have partial Synchrony, which is something in between uh, synchronous and asynchronous systems. Uh, it is an event, it is an, an asynchronous system which eventually becomes synchronous. But we cannot know when. Um, but in every execution, there is some bound eventually that will hold. We don't know this bound. It is another way to formalize the following, is that your or my algorithm will behave as if first there is we have a long enough time window where everything behaves nicely so that the algorithm can achieve its goals. Initially, we don't know that but this time window will come and in this time window the algorithm can can behave nicely if it the algorithm is going to terminate or come to an agreement it can do that 
And we consider most of, uh, say, internet-based systems to be systems that can be modeled as asynchronous systems. So asynchronous system is basically, we say it in one more time, your algorithm will have a long enough time window where everything behaves nicely. Here you start a session of your algorithm. It could be an agreement algorithm. It could be a commit protocol. And initially we don't know. But there will be a time period where the system behaves synchronously from now on. This time period is enough for the algorithm to achieve its goals and to terminate. Okay, thank you.